Welcome back to another episode of Real and Real Me, and we are live. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna do the best we can, and the best that we can is always better than what we'd expect it to be. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Real and Real Me podcast. Okay, there you go. The podcast. Because I'm not going to blow directly into the mic for the rest of the episode. The podcast where you and I, I and you discuss some of the mundane, some of the otherwise ignored upon, and some of the otherwise stupid shit that goes around on the planet, as well as some really essential taboo level crap. Which also kind of incorporates the whole idea of what might be worth it and what might not be worth it at the end of the day. But yeah, it's not what we're going for. What we're going for is some good, good takes. And we're going to jump straight right into it with, first and foremost, mentioning what is the world's most horrible news as of now. And we're going to just take a quick little breaking video that I wanted to address about the Notre Dame Cathedral. So, let's go. So, yes, if it wasn't obvious before, it's obvious now that, well, in a nutshell, the Notre Dame the Rotterdam, it's not Rotter, the Rotterdam Cathedral caught fire, which was uh, horrific because it happens to be the most popular tourist attraction in all of Paris, m- even more than the Eiffel Tower, I'm guessing, because people love visiting cathedrals for some reason. It's, it's been a thing for a while. Either way, the cathedral caught on fire. It was, I mean, damages were pretty, pretty bad. But then I came across this news that is very nice to look at because it's it's kind of refreshing. Because here we go. The Notre Dame Cathedral will be rebuilt to be much more beautiful than it was. Now, I do realize that it was not just about l- the rebuilding. It was about losing certain aspects of history that will never be the same. I mean, the components that went to that building when it was built all those years ago was I mean it gave it an authentic look and now I mean it can be replaced in some of the technology that we use to make things look more authentic and more ancient than they were initially so yeah it's, I mean if you were living under a rock and you go back to Notre Dame after it's done being reconstructed there is a good chance that you might not be able to tell the to, to tell the difference if it's your first time being there. There is a good chance that you won't even realize that oh my god, it looks so different than it was earlier. Which is nice, but then again, it's kinda disconcerting when you realize that it's going to be almost as good as the real thing you was still the same place, still the same structure, still the same values and etiquettes that are going to be embraced by the people who visit there every day. But then again, it's going to be kind of different. Kind of sad, but luckily there was not any loss of life. So we're happy there. And we're going to just move it on towards some Saudi sisters. That run away. Now, this is a story that I really didn't want to get into initially because this is not a channel in which I discuss news stories. But it, this was like, it's kind of weird, alright? Because the whole thing that's going on with the United States and Saudi Arabia right now, it's kind of weird. It all started with the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi. As we all know, the US based Saudi journalist who was against the royal family and a lot of things that they've done and who brought them to justice at least tried to bring them to justice on multiple occasions and uh, well ultimately it led him to his demise by being assassinated brutally by the Saudi special forces it was almost tracked back to King Mohammed bin Salad himself but well I guess international politics also looks at the billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions that are coming into play so as soon as we knew about that story, we knew for a fact that Donald Trump was not going to be doing anything about it. That was obvious. And since then, it's been kind of weird because there's been a lot of Saudi-related news that has been on 
global topics it is uh, in the middle was about saudi arabia proclaiming that women can drive but then again they had to have a guy with them in the car it then went towards women couldn't buy cars and then ultimately it came down to women being able to drive i don't even know the depths of how implemented this rule is in saudi arabia or what are the hidden bylaws that they must abide by but it's weird nonetheless when you realize that people who literally escape saudi arabia are forced to go back to saudi arabia and face justice i mean i know the whole context of it being an islamic state and the whole concept of you know being accountable to islam and everything that it's stood for over the years but still libya has been bombed for 3 days straight now it's been 3 days since libya has been going through some intense bombing that is horrible in all its standing with people not even paying any international attention to the fact that there literally fucking volleys of rockets being fired at libya right now really referring to the fact that the volley attacks that just i mean the volley of rockets that were just fired at libya is almost as good as the war acts that were perpetrated by hitler himself libya is a hell hole right now it is so brutal that people don't even realize that it's a country that needs some of the most amount of help out there being is blaming okay so let me state a few facts for you guys right now the tripoli based administration is blaming all right the tripoli based administration the tripoli based administration is blaming the bombings on forces ranged on the outskirts of the capital which are loyal to the commander who once who was once a general all right so the entire issue of who is firing these missiles into libya well right now the tripoli based administration services are claiming that it's a separatist group that is currently loyal to a commander who was once a general under the ex dictator of libya itself colonel gaddafi now khalifa haftar threatened to storm the capital with his self-styled libyan national army when he began his assault nearly 2 weeks ago it's been 2 weeks of constant conflicts 2 weeks of constant turmoil 2 weeks of constant threats being fired from all directions at all people with nothing being out of bounds with nothing being akin to oh that's too extreme or oh, that's too out there this is a really messed up story this is a really messed up part because you don't understand until your boots on the ground that the people who are living there on an everyday basis the people who are interacting with those in need with those injured with those with blown up limbs with those coming into the hospitals with kids in their hands that are suffering from catastrophic life threatening injuries that they shouldn't really be exposed to at this age no one is supposed to be exposed to this at any age for that matter of fact war is stupid in all realms of imagination war is stupid and that's about it there is no if and and buts about it if you think that you can make a positive proponent for why war is so important and why we as a nation require we as a species not a nation we as a species require war to establish our mighty control over the rest of the world so that we can establish the fact that oh i'm greater than you and you are lesser than me so stay in your lane there are no lanes anymore all right welcome to the 21st freaking century the world is nothing like it used to be the world is not what you think it will be the world is so much more and so much less at the same time people are further away yet closer together than ever before and it's a time like this when you come across new stories like these which makes me completely take a 360 on my entire prospectus for this episode that i had laid down 
I was gonna come around to it and I was gonna do a legit complete 360 but it turns out that now while we're addressing this there are a few more issues that I wanted to get into and that's just gonna be a complete 180 from everything that we've been trying to do on this series but it's just the second episode and it's going to be as freestyle as we can make it so without any further ado I guess with all due respect we'll be moving on towards North Korea because it turns out that some new movement shows that North Korean satellites have captured I mean the new movements have been captured by satellites which shows that the nuclear sites are active again now we all knew that the talks had broken down between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un we all knew that the summits that happened were akin to nothing anymore they were just that stupid summits but now this is having some real world consequences Kim Jong-un is resorting back to his nuclear testing which is gonna escalate tensions again which might just escalate tensions to the point in which we don't realize that all-out nuclear war could be a real-world possibility. The last time these two countries were on high tensions against each other, the doomsday clock was closer to midnight than ever before. Which is very, very concerning. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would suggest that you guys open up a new tab right now and look up doomsday clock. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Also, the clicking and the clanking in the background is something that I can't help. I'm recording in my home studio, but there's construction nearby. And these guys are going at it. So, there's nothing we can do except for moving on. So, we're going to move on towards these runaway sisters. Now, the exact story that is around them is kind of disconcerting because the Saudi government has kind of trapped them in a way that they need to be deported from Georgia is where they're stuck but if they are deported they fear that they might be getting the death penalty they fear that because they fled oppression and Saudi Arabia is now looking at them like someone who's trying to basically demean them in the eyes of the rest of the world they want to bring them to justice it is weird because Saudis are now using the cards of sending their own families to Georgia to look for these two sisters and bring them back which is disconcerting because you know as a father and as a brother yourself that if you do that there's a big chance that your sister your daughter well, they might not make it alive back in your homeland. So what do you do? You're faced with the predicament. Do you go through with it? Do you, you know, do you abandon your entire family base that is in Saudi Arabia? Or do you go after your own blood and bring them back to so-called justice? If this isn't required for... if I mean, if this isn't the pretense for outrage culture, I don't know what is. This needs to be out there. People need to pay more attention to such stuff. Real-world consequences for real-world behaviors is not too much to ask for. It's very, very, very straightforward. And that's about what I want to say regarding this. You guys can follow them on Twitter at the rate Georgia sisters they have a Twitter account by that name and I don't know the history of why they have a Twitter account by that name could be a new account that they created but whatever you can follow live updates for the story there we are now gonna move on towards a brief oversight look now the oversight look shows us that 700 million has been donated and pledged towards rebuilding the Notre Dame Cathedral. The two sisters that fled Donald Trump has officially vetoed a bid that said United States should end its aid for Saudi Arabia and Yemen. Donald Trump single-handedly shot that down because of the billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. For those of you who get that reference, we can be friends. 
Moving on to Venezuela accepts its first batch of aid from the Red Cross. Now, from those of you who don't know, Nicolas Maduro and Venezuela has been in the global conflict news for as long as we can literally imagine right now. Ever since Hugo Chavez, this guy has been the sheer proprietor for nothing but pain and suffering throughout his entire nation. People are losing up to 20 to 30 kilos and they call it the Maduro diet because, well, they don't have anything to eat. They're, the markets are running empty. Prices are going through the roof. Inflammation is blowing up the nation. And this guy, the dictator, first of all, refuses to step down. First of all, refuses to acknowledge the fact that the new elections that just happened declared that he is no longer in power. Refuses to acknowledge any of that. And instead, this guy is eating some lavish meals where the rest of his people are dying of hunger. The contrast of human civilization is so stupid and so abrupt that, I mean, it's unfathomable, man. If you're an alien and you're standing on the outskirts of our planet and looking down at us, looking at all the bullshit that goes on out here on an everyday basis, you'd be... I don't know why you'd come down. Honestly, I don't know why you'd come down. If I, if I was you, I wouldn't come down. I wouldn't come and interact with this species. I'd be like, these guys need to sort out their shit first. If, I, if these guys don't know how to live as a united species, I don't know what can bring them together. Moving back towards North Korean satellite images that have popped up. You guys can look these up as well for those of you particularly interested about them. I'm gonna link to this article down below so you can go straight here. A man and his wife were killed by a pet deer. Now this is some next level shit when you realize that people keep pet deers and when they grow up they kill them. They don't kill the deer, the deer kills the people. For those of you who are confused. It, it's, just, it's just weird man, it's just weird because you don't realize... You don't realize that... It is so stupid to keep animals who deserve to be in the open, to keep animals who need open white spaces into contained, confined enclosures in which you're living with them. And then you expect the results to be any different. And then you blame the animals. You take the animals out back and you put a bullet in the animal's head. What in the frick did the animal do to you to deserve a bullet in the damn head? If anything, you should be shot on the back of the head for going and living in there in the first place. Or getting that animal in there in the first place. Despite knowing the fact that it's going to outgrow the damn enclosure in the next five years. No, but look, it's a fawn. No, let's take it home. No, that's not how it works. Leave the damn thing alone. Apart from that, we've got some all-out declaration of gratitude towards the firefighters, towards the burning of the Notre Dame Cathedral. The Westminster Abbey chimed its bells in respect. Hundreds of people were outside the vigils in Paris who were applauding the firefighters for putting out the blaze. So, it was overall quite a depressing week. It was overall quite a depressing 72 hours to be more precise. A lot happened that was not good in the eyes of the world. A lot happened that was not good for various subparts of the world. A lot happened that was definitely not good for the history of the world. But then again, it's just weird when you realize that all of this could have been better had we learned lessons that were out there for us to learn had we given the time and the efforts and the resources that we were so hell-bent on holding on to for dear life to better the lives of those who needed it the conflicts like libya conflicts like sudan conflicts like yemen conflicts like world hunger conflicts like poverty conflicts like immigration these can be solved with the right distribution of resources. Mindset 
can't. The concept of terrorism can't. There's a line that you need to be well aware of of what can and what cannot be revolved, what what can and what can be resolved with just sheer resources. You can't just spend your way out of everything. You have to look at it for what it's worth, for look at it for the reality of it. It's easier said than done than having to sit with your arms crossed, pointing fingers at the people who are trying to do something in the first place. It's easier to be in the comfort of your own homes and criticizing those out in the field. It's always going to be easier to be listening to someone talk and to criticize every word that they utter but rather than to talk yourself and make your voice be heard make some use of the fact that there is more out there than what you are currently offering I mean if we can't understand that then we can't understand anything and the future of our species is well sorry to say but doomed we're gonna Alright, so Jim Jeffries. This is what we're gonna end the show on. <coughs> For those of you who haven't heard of Jim Jeffries, I suggest you go and take a look at this piece right here. It's called Women of Africa and All Women Group Protecting An All Women Group in Africa Protecting Animals from Poachers. It's from the Jim Jeffries show on Comedy Central, but it's pretty good. It's a nice detailed piece at what the reality of things is. Although with a funny twist on it, yeah. Of course, it's Jim Jeffrey's show. It's comedic relief. But uh, it's the only thing that we have to offer. And that's unfortunately the brutal truth. Because the world has been going through some shit on a global scale. As well as some very very intense political states throughout the world in many different parts of the world actually Venezuela has got its whole dictatorial issues going on India has its major elections coming up the United States is obsessed with the Democrats that are growing every day that are running for 2020 Germany's Chancellor is stepping down after years of being in power the UK is dealing with Brexit. I mean, there is so much out there. I mean, Latvia and Lithuania are dealing with a growing Russian presence in their region. There is so much that is unnecessary conflict all across the world, all across the board, with complete isolation when it comes to considering the fact that we are the same species with complete isolation when it comes to considering the fact that we are one in the same that we need to respect our presence we need to respect the fact that we are looking at another conscious human being who understands every word that you utter from your mouth even if there is a language barrier the language of mutual understanding when it comes to certain emotions that can be spoken to without using words is always going to be out there. The mutual understanding of two different humans on grassroots is always going to be there. You cannot go and stand next to a horse and expect to establish some amount of communication with a horse if you don't know anything about the horse. But you go and stand next to a random human being who you have never met, who doesn't speak the same language as you, in 10 minutes, you are bound to establish some source of communication. You are bound to establish some source of interaction that can then help you grow or help you resolve an issue that you are currently facing, help you grow towards an understanding of the issue that you were or you can be facing. It's our ability to look at things that aren't in our face immediately and problem solve them for the future it's up to us to understand that what you don't need can be required in the future what you don't look at as important right now can be the distinguishing factor in whether it makes it or breaks it 
in the future the capability that the human mind holds to elaborate such extensive thoughts throughout the realm in all various aspects of life in all realms of humanity is nothing short of being completely mind blowing if we don't know any better i mean if we didn't know any better we call it magic because back in the day that's exactly what magic was what people couldn't explain as science was magic it was the law it was the super natural it was the powers that be that controlled certain humans and gave them certain abilities that were greater than others and modern science taught us that that was all hooey they taught us that no that was just because of some scientific characteristics of certain objects that they were interacting with that you our eye could hold in our own hands and do ourselves and as long as we realize the fact that it is you who's doing it and it is me who's doing it with our own eyes in our own hands you realize that it th- it's no magic there it's just a sheer understanding of the properties of the object that you might be wielding at that point in time that's about it there is more to understand than you do understand right now there is more to ask than you know right now the oldest saying in the book is question everything and people say that oh my god question everything that's so overrated so overrated that you don't even need to understand why why do i question everything i don't want to question everything you should question everything i don't want to question everything it's stupid to question everything i don't have the time well if you just realize the value of questioning certain things in life you would realize that everything is worth it the sheer knowledge that you can gather is going to be priceless priceless to the point that any amount of money any amount of resources any amount of anything that can be offered to you is not going to be able to replace the fact that you have that knowledge in your head the fact that it's cemented into the core context of your brain that you can recollect it and reuse that at a later date at a later day at a later date at a later time at a later place without having to even think it turns into muscle memory that you can then tap into whenever you require and that just becomes the definition of you understanding that just becomes the definition of what it means to be conscious so we're going to end with that ladies and gentlemen this has been another episode of real and real me more of the real me in this episode more of the depressing stuff that's been going around the world in the unreal section i hope it was unreal but it is real you got a side of the real is me blabbering you got a side of the unreal that was the bad stuff that's been going around the world and well i'm always here for the next one so until then make sure you guys stay you believe in something bigger than you and i will see you guys real soon bye bye everybody <laughs>